Since 1975, the Florida Council has worked to prepare Florida's young people for personal and financial success uh, through programs in economics education, the free enterprise system, and personal financial literacy. Uh, we've long recognized how vital this is to preparing uh, the adults of tomorrow for success in the workplace, to be informed and wise consumers and prudent investors. Uh, in partnership with five university centers around the state, uh, we've uh, Florida State, Florida Atlantic University, Florida State College Jacksonville, Miami-Dade College, and USF, uh, we are committed to helping teachers be prepared to make every economics and financial literacy course a success and to prepare students for tomorrow. You received uh, today, uh, and really our purpose in gathering, is to advance support for a required standalone semester course in personal financial literacy, which we're calling the money course. Uh, you were given a copy of a white paper authored by the Federal Reserve Bank of Atlanta, which was the product of a Florida Financial Literacy Summit convened on August 12th. Uh, the partners in that summit were the Florida Council on Economic Education, USF, the Federal Reserve Bank of Atlanta, the Florida Bankers Association, and Bay Cities Bank. In that day, over the course of the summit, we had expert panelists that really brought four key issues to light that we'll elaborate just a little bit on this morning. The first is we uh, emphasized best practices in curriculum design and pedagogy and teaching about money uh, to young people. And it was said again and again that the keys to success were st comprehensive standards in grades K through 12, professional development for teachers, high stakes testing, such as an end of course exam, and ultimately a standalone course in economics and personal financial literacy. Dr. Michael Gutter, associate professor at the University of Florida and a family economic specialist, presented evidence-based research that said students who had had a course taught by a trained teacher were um, less likely to abuse credit cards and graduate uh, college with credit card debt, were more likely to pay their bills monthly, uh, and be better managers of money and their finances as start in their professional career. Uh, Federal bankruptcy judge Carol Delano shared that the people, the purpose of financial literacy courses is to keep people from in front of her bench, out of the bankruptcy courts, and that the people who she sees are professionals. Uh, they're college educated. They're our neighbors, our friends, family members who simply were never taught the skills and financial behaviors necessary for success and to avoid that uh, conclusion. The most important outcome of the day was that there is ready availability of partners, resources, and training so that a course in financial literacy, the money course, can be implemented at little to no cost to local school districts. Um, at this time, I'd like to call on Jeff Simon, Senior Vice President uh, with Simon and Associates of Raymond James and Chairman of the Board of Directors for the Florida Council on Economic Education. Thank you, and thank you all for coming. Um, when you have a virus in your computer, you do everything you can as quickly as you can to get rid of that virus. When your kids have a virus, you will do everything you can and spend whatever you must to get rid of that virus. Well, there's a virus among our young folks in Florida. And the Florida legislature has the ability to come up with an antidote to that virus. And that virus is financial illiteracy. Our students are getting out of school without the ability to be successful financially. They do not have the tools, it's not being taught. Right now, foreclosures in America, if you go back 60 years ago, there was one out of 1,000 foreclosures in America. Now it's 20 out of 1,000, a 2,000% 2, increase. In the last 30 years, bankruptcy in America has increased 650%. Why is that? Well, people just don't have the fundamentals of personal finance to avoid these catastrophes. <clears throat> the Florida legislature undertook legislation last session to begin teaching financial literacy in high school. But what is really needed is a full semester course. Right now it's a half semester, it's a full semester course is what's really essential to make this happen. Right now, student debt is more than a trillion dollars in the United States, larger than credit card debt. In Florida, 9% of the students default on student debt, and that's doubled in the last five years. This is a crisis that will ruin students' credit, and more than 50% of employers run credit checks before they hire. So it's going to make, make it harder and harder for young people 
to get jobs, good jobs, that will help them pay off their debt. Student loan debt is there until you pay it off. It's not forgiven. Students in college don't have financial plans as to how they're going to pay for it. And about 60% of students, when they go to college, are taking on student debt. They don't have a financial plan. 70% don't know what interest rate they're paying on their credit cards. 60% max out their credit cards in their first year. And 50% of them are paying late fees. These are the fundamentals of sound financial planning, but they have no training whatsoever before they get to college or after they get up high school. And so young folks in Florida and throughout the country are getting into debt. The largest group of people in America, the fastest growing group in bankruptcy are people 20 to 24. How can we solve this? What's the antidote? The antidote is better financial education in high school. And right now, it is not there. There are other states, but very few, that are offering it. Florida has the chance to be in the vanguard of putting together sound financial training, personal financial training in Florida high schools so that our students can graduate being financially literate and being more successful in life. So uh, we are working closely with the legislature, the Department of Education, to work with the legislature in this session to come up with a bill to encourage financial literacy, a full course, full semester course in financial literacy going forward. And this isn't something that's going to be a burden on the state because there are already partners throughout the state, the Florida Council on Economic Education, the Florida Prosperity Partnership, Federal Reserve. There are many partners that have already developed great curriculums that can work with the Department of Education in putting this together. So there are resources abundantly available to make this happen. And so the Florida Council on Economic Education and our many partners are ready to help make this happen. Thank you. This time I'd like to uh, ask Chris Cummins, Zone Manager with Financial Services of State Farm Insurance and Vice Chair of the Florida Council Board of Directors to share. Thank you and good morning. It is uh, great to be here, a privilege in fact, and I'm grateful that uh, this topic is getting the needed emphasis and focus and support of you, the press of the state of Florida and, and outside of the state. This, I tell you, when you talk about a topic that can coalesce uh, themes around uh, support, I think when you talk about themes of money, when you talk about themes of money that uh, empower folks to make the very best decisions for them personally and for their families, I think there's a lot of agreement uh, on that topic. Certainly with the support of the Florida Council and some of the organizations that Jeff alluded to and Mike as well, what you see uh, around this initiative specifically is broad-based support publicly and privately. Uh, Mike shared uh, with you that I work with State Farm. I've been in the financial services business for more years than I can believe at this point, over 27 years as a matter of fact. And I tell you, I know uh, both as a provider of financial services to consumers that informed consumers are the best consumers. I'll tell you personally, there is nothing more heart-wrenching to sit down with a family. Um, one of our 640 agents across the state has this type of conversation each and every day, helping folks to a better way. And I'm proud for State Farm that we're, we're, we have a venue to do that, as do many other organizations that work in the private sector do that. But I think, when I think about that, and I think about the impact that an initiative like this could have from the buying consumer, it excites me because, again, I know best, uh, the best consumers are informed consumers. Secondarily to that, uh, around the emotional impact that money issues can have on individuals and their families. Folks, we all have a personal, we all have a personal story that if it has not happened to us, then we know somebody who's been detrimentally impacted by poor financial decisions. So if you look at many of the socio economic problems that face our state, that face specifically our young people, and you think about the impact that that could have not only for them, but for generations to come. Folks, I know of no better topic 
for us to rally behind to get these young folks in a spot where they can make the very best decisions. And then finally, uh, we're a big employer, and many of the partners that you hear about today, we employ thousands of people across the state. And I'll tell you, folks that we hire, folks that work for us, folks that are savvy about their finances are happier employees. So there's a win, win, win. Consumers, the emotional play, and then obviously uh, making the Florida employee base as strong as possible. Folks, I know of no other topic uh, that can do more good than having a foundational course in financial literacy for our young folks coming up. So again, thank you all for coming and making this a priority. It means a lot. Thank you. We envision the money course addressing the basic standards of personal financial literacy, beginning with things that seem as simple as earning and savings. Uh, Leslie Mace of the Federal Reserve Bank captured for us in the white paper a remark by Alex Sanchez, the president of the Florida Bankers Association, a co-convener of the summit. He made the remark that a student with a savings account is seven times more likely to go to college. Uh, so it's as basic and, and elementary as that uh, behavior starting early in life. To share other remarks from the Florida Bankers Association is Anthony DeMarco, Executive Vice President of Government Relations. Thank you all very much. Thank you for coming. I, you know, I would like to echo what we've heard before as well. Um, finan financial education is no longer an option. It's got to be an integral part of people's understanding. And it starts at the home and works its way through the school. And I think this money course will go a long way to helping us as Floridians understand the value of money and the value of savings and the value of, of, of so many things that go along with that, investing, et cetera. Um, you know, as, as, as Mike just said, um, if you, the more people that save, the more they go to college. They have savings accounts. They need to learn how to balance their checkbooks. They need to learn how to save and invest, and the power of compounding of interest. I sat down in uh, my office before I came over here, and I did a real fast. If you saved 100 bucks a month for, if you started working at 21, you retired at 61. So for 40 years, you would save, I think, something like $75,000 with compounding of interest of just $100 a month doing that. And that's the power of compounding and the power that these uh, students and Floridians need to learn. Um, and the sooner they learn this, uh, the better, and it's better in high school than it is in college when they go off and make mistakes and they get the credit cards and they understand, they can understand credit card debt, they can understand uh, school debt and et cetera and help them uh, move through. Additionally, the educated, financially educated consumers are less likely to be fooled by financial scams. We've all read in the papers over the years of folks with di different scams uh, out there and taking people's money through investments or there's one that the, uh, uh, that there's a, uh, that we read about them every day. And then the educated consumers are likely to purchase a home, save for college, and save retirement. And that's what will get them through the rest of their life if they can, and they can do that. And, and, the, and you know, as bankers, <clears throat> we find that the more educated the consumer is, as it was, was mentioned, um, it's, they're the best customers. They will use and get more from their banking services and that they will uh, be able to invest more and, and, and just f fulfill their retirement better as they move forward. And we hope that this course will be a part of that. We hope that they can um, work through that and we can get this going. And we just think it's a great idea for more financial literacy to, to help those in, in Florida. And with that, I'll just turn it back over to you. Thank you. As we've uh, reiterated, there's broad-based support. This isn't just an initiative of the Florida Council on Economic Education, but there's broad-based support for a standalone semester course in personal financial literacy, and we're calling on the legislature to uh, continue and take advantage of the opportunity at hand to implement and mandate such a course as the money course. It takes partnerships, uh, and among the partners uh, who collaborate with the Florida Council is the Florida Prosperity Partnership, and I'd like to ask Kay Smith's president and CEO to share. Thank you. Well, good morning, everyone. The great thing about going last is most of the things I was going to say have been said, so I get to tell you one of those stories that Chris was talking about. One sentence about the Florida Prosperity Partnership and who we are. We're a statewide collaboration of more than 160 organizations from all sectors of the community, all of which are passionately focused on improving the financial stability of Floridians and primarily low-income Floridians. 
more than half of our organizations actually are on the ground, hands-on teaching financial education, and they started with adults. But very early on, we realized that the youth need that same kind of training because they don't get it at home, and up until this last year, they weren't getting it in school. So we at the Florida Prosperity Partnership began working with uh, Representative Jimmy Patronus from Panama City two years ago when he introduced the first iteration of this amendment, and we were thrilled to work with the FCEE last year and intend to do the same thing this year. I do want to tell you one uh, quick story, and that is about a lovely 20-year-old woman named Taylor. Now, Taylor graduated from high school without the benefit of financial education, and in the two years since she'd been out of school, she had gotten herself into a lot of financial trouble so that she didn't have a bank account, she didn't have a car, she did have a job. She was working about 25 hours a week at $10 an hour, and her employer had been paying her in cash. She found out that her employer was going to have to start paying her with a check, and I said, well, I happened to be talking to her just after she found that out, and I said, well, what are you going to do? You don't have a bank account. She said, oh, it's no problem. I'll go to Walmart. They'll cash my check for $3. I said, but, okay, now you're going to have four checks a month. That's $12. There's not a bank account in the world that's going to charge you that much money. So we talked about a few other things, and the good news is the next time I saw her, and I'm not taking credit for this. A lot of other things happened, but the next time I saw her, she had a bank account. She had worked out a deal with her father to get a car, and she was enrolled in college, in night school, so she could continue her, her job. So I love stories like that. It's the kind of thing that we do on the ground. One other quick thing that I would like to talk about, and I, I was telling Chris this just this morning, one of the most poignant pleas I have heard for youth asking for financial education came from the Youth Advisory Board that State Farm has set up. We were very fortunate at the FPP to get one of those Youth Advisory Board grants, and so we are actually working with teachers and students in Orlando, and we have set up a standalone class where the high school students will actually teach the education to the middle school students and then mentor them through the year. So that will actually solidify it for both groups. We're really excited about this, and we will continue to work on the whole thing because, you know, we can't afford not to equip our youth with all the tools they're going to need when they face this complex world. I mean, Jeff told you about student debt, $23,000 in Florida average, average ten dollars to $12,000 in credit card debt. It's a terrible burden to put on our youth before they can even get into the world. So thank you all so much. I appreciate being here. Love working with these guys, and very nice to see you. Thank you, Kay. In closing, um, I think our message is clear that the present system isn't working. It isn't preparing Floridians to enter adulthood and be productive members of the workforce, prepared consumers and wise investors. Uh, they lack the skills and personal behaviors and attributes necessary to succeed. Uh, so we're calling on you to help spread the word uh, to support the money course, require the money course. Uh, we stand not alone as the Florida Council on Economic Education, but with our partners to collaborate and help advance this. I would encourage you to refer to the white paper for many references, also to a website, requirethemoneycourse.com. Uh, at requirethemoneycourse.com, uh, we will be posting additional references and resources as well as posting updates as we move through the legislative session and continue this uh, push for the money course and to advance financial literacy for our students.